Hello students. I am creating this video to quickly show you what you need to do for your Outsiders final project, which is due this Friday. We will discuss it, um, discuss the requirements today, and then um, my plan is that you have time to work on gathering theme quotes, which you'll need for your final project. And then Wednesday, you will get into your groups and work on your rough draft. And then Thursday and Friday, you will have both periods to work on creating your final draft. Once you have your final draft done, um, everything will be due on Friday at the end of the period. So you don't need to stay up till 4 a.m. on Thursday night trying to get it done. It's due at the end of the period Friday, right? Okay, so uh, what I'd like you to do is turn to page four in your Outsiders packet. By the way, if you think it's weird to see me up in this corner, there I am, okay? Um, if you think it's weird to see me up in the corner, that the reason I'm doing that is because I read an article that students are more engaged in a video that their teacher makes if the teacher uh, can be seen and they're not just hearing their voice through the speakers. So I was like, all right, fine. So I'm doing this at my home, but yeah, I got all fancy it up again because I was all in my sweats and I'm like, all right, fine. I'll put on nice clothes again. So no, I'm not making a video for you in my sweats. That'd be weird. Okay, so you are on page four. Are we page four? Yes, this is page four. Okay, so you're on page four. Go ahead and follow along as I read the uh, directions. The directions say in groups of four, each group member will select one theme to complete the following activity. No, no repeat themes in groups. So basically what you're doing is you're gonna get into groups of four. We studied five themes. Okay, we studied five themes. And so what you're gonna do is as a group, you are going to decide um, which four are you guys gonna focus on and who's going to do the first theme, the second theme, the third theme, fourth theme, okay? So each person is responsible for one theme, but as a group, you end up covering four out of the five. See my brilliant plan? Mm -hmm. That's how I work, I know. Super smart, yep. Okay, so remember that a theme statement is something that's going to teach a life lesson. So for example, it takes courage to face life's problems. That's a theme. A non-example is teens have many problems. It's not really teaching a life lesson. That's just kind of a fact, okay? A non-example, everyone has problems. That's not very specific. We're not sure, hmm, how does the novel teach us that? Not really. Okay, so part one, once you've selected your theme and come up with your theme statement, is you are going to write a poem. And it has to be a minimum of 15 lines, two stanzas, three short quotes from throughout the story that show the message or theme in the book. And you have to incorporate the quotes into your poem. That's the challenge. Your poem should teach others about how to handle life situations. So basically you're teaching through this poem, but the life situation is how to handle life using that theme that we studied. Okay. Part two, once you've written your poem, you're gonna make a collage border around the poem. The collage shows your poem's message. You need to have lots of color and interest. Pictures must be appropriate for school and cannot be of you and your friends doing this. Okay? <laughs> don't do that weird duck lips either. Looks weird. I don't understand that one. Why do teenagers always look mad? Their lives are good. Okay. All right. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. But um, make sure that your pictures are appropriate and that they're fitting the explanation of the theme. Don't just have a bunch of pictures of Johnny and Pony Boy. Okay, I've seen the movie. You don't need to just get a bunch of Google images of the movie. That's not really teaching me the theme. You need to go beyond that. Okay. All right, sea level work. This is where you just have your name and period clearly visible in the upper right corner of the slide or paper. Um, you've got the novel's title and author. You have a 15 lines minimum for your poem. And a line is a line of poetry, just a line of poetry. A stanza is a chunk of a poem. So you need to have at least two chunks of your poem too, okay? All right, you have three quotes incorporated into your poem. The poem is readable uh, in handwriting or font. 
Um, and collage has at least four pictures that connect to theme and poem. So if it's a bunch of pictures of you and your friends that doesn't really connect to the theme or the poem, I don't care if you say it's about family. No, a bunch of pictures of you and your family does not to show me how the poem, the theme of family connects to the book or the poem. Okay, if you want to be on this project, um, you will have quotes that add to the poem's meaning. meaning. Um, you will have, um, oh, so the, so the use of the three quotes add to the poem's meaning. They're not just thrown in there randomly. Uh, the poem is clear, clearly teaches the theme's connection to real life. Uh, your collage enhances the message of the poem and it's full color, less than 5% white space. If you want an A, I make it even more challenging. Uh, it has to have creative use of language and incorp incorporation of quotes. So I need to be like, wow, that's impressive. Not, mm, okay, mm, that's nice. So impress me. Uh, it needs to demonstrate careful selection of phrasing. And in order to get an A, your group has to have common elements throughout each individual project to give it a unified appearance and feel. So maybe you all have the same background or you all have similar images. Um, I, I don't know exactly what that's gonna look like, but it needs to feel like this is all one group and they've all worked together, okay? That's what I'm going for, that it feels like a group project, not three people who did individual projects, okay? All right. Uh, Tomorrow, Wednesday, um, I'm going to divide you into people who have their Chromebooks on Wednesday and people who do not have their Chromebooks on Wednesday. People who have Chromebooks will get to um, pair up with other people with Chromebooks. If you don't have your Chromebook, that's okay. You can still do the project. You're just going to do it with people who are also going to not have their Chromebooks. And the, all of you, the three of four of you, will work on completing the assignment. Um, what am I going to say here? Uh, you will work on a piece of paper. Each of you, your slide, let's say, is a piece of paper, okay, that I'll give you. Okay, and your final project will be shared with the class. And your final project is due, drum roll please, December 11th. Go ahead and write that in. Your final project is due December 11th. So now that I've talked to you about the requirements, let me talk to you, show you the examples. So go ahead and turn in your journal to page 96, where you have that half sheet of paper that we folded and you had the poem on the inside. We're gonna look at the poem. Let me go to that. Okay, so here we are on page 96 in your class journal. Go ahead and open up your uh, paper and you will see this, um, which is your um, examples, okay? So I gave you an example, which is on the left side, and I gave you a non-example, which is on the right side. Okay, so let's say the theme is, it takes courage to face life's problems. Here's the poem that a student wrote on that. Run or stay. When problems confront you, you have a choice. Run or stay. Will you face the challenge? Or will you say, come on, Johnny, we're running away. Page 51. Coward. Problems don't disappear just because you do. They stick to you like gum on your shoe. Each time you turn around, you will hear, run or stay. Run or stay. It won't go away. Courage. Face your troubles, no matter what you've done. Tell yourself, I'm going back to turn myself in, page 87. You will know, I can't take whatever is coming now, or I can take whatever is coming now, page 75. Once you overcome your troubles, you will not wonder, run or stay. You will know, I have taken the long way around, but I am home to stay page 99. Okay. All right, there's a couple of features I want you to circle or highlight. Uh, if you have your highlighter, you have 15 seconds to get it out. Um, right here, do you see how I put the brackets? Okay, brackets mean that I, uh, as the writer, am adding something or changing something to clarify. So I took the quote that's on page 87 and I changed it slightly. Okay. 
So Johnny, when he says this, says, we're going back to turn ourselves in. Well, that doesn't make sense the way I'm using it in the poem. So as the poet, um, I yes, I wrote this. Uh, what I'm doing is changing that to um, I'm and myself, okay? All right, so we've highlighted the I'm. Go ahead and highlight myself, okay? And then I want you to highlight the 87. I want you to notice how I mark what page it came from, okay? So all of that. Now notice that I have quotes that start on page 51 and it ends on 99. That's a good range of pages. I am showing there that I have read a large chunk of this book and I found the theme in multiple places, okay? So that is our example, okay? And I, at this point, would give this a B because I don't feel like it's highly creative. Now notice that it doesn't always rhyme, okay? There's a little bit of rhyming and then, let me go back up here. In this second stanza, this chunk right here is the second stanza. It's a chunk, a chunk is a stanza, okay? Notice that I use some slang here, okay? As a poet, you can do that. That's okay as long as you're doing it on purpose and it's obvious that you're doing that for a reason, okay? So notice that here's a stanza one, here's stanza two, okay? Stanza three and stanza, whoops, stanza four. Okay, so this poem has four stanzas to it, uh, which is a good number of stanzas to have. Notice how it's organized. Okay, take a moment and um, notice what makes this poem clearly teach the theme of courage. Look for how does this teach the theme of courage, but connect to the book as well, and also connect to the book. All right. All right. Now let's look at our non-example. This is our non-example over here. I do not want you to do this. First of all, look at how short it is. It's not that long. And when you, when I read it to you, you'll see why I'm not impressed by this. Okay. Run or stay. When problems confront you, you have a choice. Run or stay. Will you say, come on, Johnny, we're running away. Problems don't disappear just because you do. Make the right choice. Face your troubles. Johnny said, I'm going back to turn myself in, page 87. Once you overcome your troubles, you will not wonder, you won't feel like a dunder. Now the obvious question is, what's a dunder? Not a real word. That is a forced rhyme. That is not creative use. That just confuses the reader. Notice that it's very simplistic and it's too direct. It's saying, don't do this. Be sure to do this. It's not poetry, okay? It's just kind of direct teaching. It's a lecture. Like, you don't like lectures. Why would you want to write one, okay? So it's not creative. It's not creative use, use of language. It's not impressive. Um, there's a little bit of rhyme, but not real good rhyme. And wonder and dunder, not good, okay? All right, you can make better choices than this. So. Uh, what I want you to do is X through this, put a big old X through it, just okay? X through it, don't scribble it out. You need to be able to look at it to make sure you don't make that mistake, but just a simple X. So you remember, don't do that one, okay? Do do this, put a star next to this one if you want, okay? That, that one's good, okay? All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you is what the Google slides will look like if you're doing it on the Chromebook. Okay, so here's the template that each student will receive. And on Thursday, I will show students how to uh, share this with each other so that they're all working on one set of slides. So the slides that you get, the first one just reminds you of your poem requirements and then reminds you of your rubric so you can always go back to it even though it's in your packet. Um, and then just a couple of important reminders. Do not mess around on your Chromebook. If I can't trust you on your Chromebook, then you're not gonna use the Chromebook and you're gonna get to do it on a piece of paper. 
while sitting with people who are using their Chromebook. I can see what you do. It's called revision history. I just push a button. I can see everything that you're doing. So use your time wisely. Use this as an educational tool, which is what it's for. It's not a toy. No, you cannot play on your Chromebook even if you are done. All right, lecture over. Number two, you may only use two different color fonts. Um, yes, one, two, two colors of fonts, that's it, because anything above that just looks unprofessional, and this is a professional document. You must use Arial. Uh, you don't get to pick another type of font. I know, you're devastated. Worst thing ever. This shows how much I care about that. So you will use Arial font because it looks professional. You're not going to use some weird scripty looking thing. But you can use two different colors. Feels like a choice. Okay. All right, number three, the poem must be in one column, so don't make your font too large. Um, be careful of background colors and crowding the slide. I must be able to clearly read what is on the slide. Information, information must be clearly organized. Do the writing or typing first. Um, and then you can go find your pictures and your backgrounds. Now remember, if you have a bunch of pictures of from the movie that we just finished watching and I have watched for several years, um, I'm not gonna be impressed. So a bunch of pictures of Johnny and Pony Boy hanging out at the vacant lot. Mm. What does that have to do with your theme? The pictures must connect to the theme. It's about the theme, not just, hey, I can find stuff on Google. Yay. OK. All right, find pictures and play with backgrounds last. Pictures must be appropriate for school. I don't want a bunch of pictures of you and your friends or you and your family. This is my family. OK, that doesn't connect to the theme of the novel, OK? Because the theme of the novel what is family exactly? What makes a family? That's the theme. Number seven, use the template to guide your writing. Uh, hint, the blue type is information you, uh, for you to fill in or to guide your answer, and then you just erase it once you're done. Okay. All right, this is what the template would look like, will look like um, in the actual uh, Google slide, and this is what you'd fill in. So you'd put in the title of your poem, Okay, and you just type over what I've got there. So, uh, run or stay. Okay, so you just fill that part in. Okay, and then you type in your poem. And notice that I'm telling you that you can get 18 lines uh, at this size font. If that doesn't work, go to size 12 font. Um, but you shouldn't need more than that. Like your poem really shouldn't be more than 20 something lines. If it's 40, Cut some stuff down. You got too much going on there. Okay. All right. Uh, and then what you can do is add your collage border, okay, and make your backgrounds. And don't forget that student name and period. All right. And there's one for each member of your group. All right. Okay. All right. Let me go live and I will answer your questions at this time. Good job watching this video. Go groups, yay! Woo, -hoo, group work. Woo -hoo.